I got home. I'm Alina, and this is just. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. I got home. This is Alina <laughs> and Justin, and welcome back to our new episode here in Hong Kong. And today we're gonna do shopping. So Hong Kong is famous for many things, especially shopping. So today we're here in the shopping district of Mong Kok. This district is famous for its trending restaurants, upscale shopping malls and street markets. This is a place where you develop your bargaining skills. And today we're going to show you all and show you how shopping is like in 2023 here in Hong Kong. So standing behind me here is a traditional Hong Kong truck. Usually, ice cream trucks like this, they have the softest ice cream. When you bite onto it, it's like eating air. So how you would know when there's an ice cream truck around is when you can hear the music. There's like a baby song playing. That's my favorite child memory. When I hear this music from afar, I know there's an ice cream truck. Uh, no, run, run it to there. Can you hear the music? Yeah. I hope you guys can hear it too. Usually, these ice cream trucks sell four products in particular, so they're very specialized in what they sell. First one is my favorite. It's a soft ice cream. It's 13 Hong Kong dollars. And the second one is nutty drumstick. I think it's just peanut on a drumstick. And the third one is ice cream cup. So it's just a typical ice cream vanilla cup. But the fourth one, this one is something only in Hong Kong special. It's got jumbo orange, which is basically ice with orange flavor. First up today, we're here at Fa Yun Street, also known as Sneaker Street. So like the name suggests, it sells a variety of different shoes and also sports equipment, etc. So this time I'll go coming here to Mongkok is to find a pair of shoes for myself because I don't have a good pair. See, I'm still wearing hiking shoes wherever I go. Hiking shoes in the middle of city. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. First impression, if you look at both sides, they are all big brands. So like Under Armour, Adidas over there, I mean Nike's, Adidas, Advance, they're all big sneakers brand. I want to find New Balance store. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll find New Balance on the street. They have all kinds of shoes here. To be honest, for me, I'm not very into that much of shoes. So I don't know what kind of fashion or trend currently it is. Some of the shoes that I saw look really old and yellow. So I don't know if that's a real trend. This will be our favorite store, New Balance. Alina's personal favorite. What do you like think? This, I guess. This one? Yeah. Uh, too grey, maybe? Too grey? You want something brighter? Yeah, maybe matching with mine. Oh, I like this. I don't know, maybe just like the blue color. What yeah. do you think, guys? 1299 I think for good shoes, you probably... Yeah, if really it lasts long, this. then it's worth it. So, yeah, we decided to take this pair of shoes because it's so comfy and I think the colors itself match my style. I always wear black pants, white shirt. So yeah, I think it looks really great. So funny things, when you buy new shoes, you always try to avoid something like dirty in a first Okay, 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 detail, detail. Avoid, 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 avoid. avoid, avoid. <laughs> I'm gonna start brushing my shoes every day. Uh-huh, after one month, Justin, like, oh, forget about your story. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> when it comes to one of the most famous shopping streets here in Hong Kong, it's of course the ladies' market. It's famous for souvenirs, small accessories, clothing. Basically, it's a woman's dream to find affordable prices, things here in this market. Maybe that's why it's called ladies market, because it's for ladies. This is a place where you develop your bargaining skills, because the ladies here will charge you 10 times or more if you don't know the price. I think when I was young, when I first came here, I didn't know how to negotiate, but then the aunties here would get very angry. They pretend to be angry, but once you walk away, they would start chasing after you. So as I was mentioning, all kinds of different souvenirs from magnets all the way to like bags, like Gucci bags, oh, lots of toys around, socks, underwear, pants, basically clothing, cheap affordable ones. If you don't want a real Gucci, you can find another Gucci here. And also traditional Chinese dresses. Even for babies. <laughs> yeah, often babies. But because this is such a tourist destination, that's why everything here is likely to be more expensive than you thought. You might thought you have bargained for a very low price, but end up actually paying a lot more than you would know. For this reason, let's go to another place. As you can see surrounding us, there are so many people because today it's a Friday night. Friday night, people love coming to Mongko. In my memory, I always come here on Friday night actually. Apart from upscale shopping malls, Mongko is also very famous for small niche outlets. For example, if you're looking for like Korean, Taiwanese, young imports clothing, then you come to Agao Center. So this place is famous for lots of youngsters outfit, but usually at a lower price. Here you can find anything. You can do your nails, you can buy some 
clothes <laughs> and price here is really pretty cheap. Yep, and style. usually these small outlets have couple floors and you often can find some hidden gems that you might not otherwise find if you walk into when we walk into a shopping district. I really like this pants a lot because this is material, you cannot make it crumble. It's always will street and always will looks pretty. This price only 79 Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, Amazing. So that most places they don't let you try first hand. You need to know your size and look at the quality in advance. The reason that we talk just now so quiet because in this place they not allow filming and we just like try to do it secretly, you know. Maybe they do some replics or copy of brands. And also another thing like mentioned is also because there are many competitors inside. They probably don't know the one the other competitors know about their price or whether they have the same product as well. Yeah, we try to film it very discreet just then. But anyway, now let's go to the next destination for today. If you're wondering how a guy from Hong Kong is speaking confidently in front of camera in English, it's because I was utilizing the right tool to practice and grow when I first started learning. Which brings us to the sponsor of this video, Quillbot, a powerful paraphrasing tool that helps students and professionals rewrite, edit, and change the tone of the text to improve clarity and accuracy. Back when I first moved to Australia, it was a super challenging time transitioning from my mother tongue Cantonese in Hong Kong to only English in Australia. Apart from practicing with my peers, I was actually using Quillbot every day to improve my vocabulary and English writing games, which eventually improve my oral speaking. Quillbot has an accurate translation of 35 different languages and it makes sure there is no error in my writing by fixing the spelling mistakes and grammar. But my favorite feature about Quillbot is the 7 print define mode. Just to give you an example this time, I'm going to try the expand mode. So I've already put in a paragraph that I want Quillbot to work on and I'm going to press the paraphrase button here. The expand mode is awesome when you want to be more elaborative, comprehensive and expand your sentences in a more understandable manner. So these days I actually use Quillbot for writing email pitches to clients. It's a lifesaver when it comes to paraphrasing. So I can Add it to Google Chrome and it improvises my writing directly in Gmail, Notion, and documents. If you want to level up your writing game, then check out the link in the description and try Coolbot today. Apart from traditional street markets here in Hong Kong, you can also find non traditional markets. For example, there are lots of pet shops here. So, selling little puppies like those ones. Yeah, we find here it's a lot. So interesting. Can we come and feel now? Maybe another place down. Hey, there was some. Okay. Wow, oh, so, so cute. Mini hoggy. Wow. So cute. <laughs> oh, no video. Unfortunately, they, they don't let us filming. But here I have another shop. Yeah, we, we can see from far away, there are a lot of dogs inside. Oh, I want to share one fun, one fact actually. It's not a very fun fact, but it's kind of a sad fact to be honest. The reason why you don't see lots of stray dogs or cats in on the streets of Hong Kong is because the government here actually try to catch these animals. And if these animals don't get adopted within a day or two, these animals will be killed. Make sure to think about it, think carefully whether you want an animal if you're ever going to pick up one of these animals at the store because the consequence is hard, very, very severe if you leave the animals on the street. The next interesting street here is called Goldfish Street. So basically, this street sells a lot of Goldfish and other types of fish. So as you see, lots of aquariums everywhere. And even you can buy aquarium plants as well to decorate up your aquarium. And if you want small shrimps, they have it here too. If you see very colorful fish, sometimes it could be because of some inhumane activities, which means maybe they dye the fish a different color. So that way they change color. So it's not very animal friendly in a way. But uh, yeah, there are lots of goldfish options here if you're a fish lover and you want to add on new fishes to your tank. Well, if you're boring and you want some... New friends. New friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's so lonely. So when I was young, I have a huge fish tank. So my father loves goldfish. So every week, sometimes he would come to one of these stores in Mongo Goldfish Street and pick up some new goldfish and add to the tank. But very often, maintaining a clean and hygienic tank is very difficult. It's not as easy as it seems. So goldfish can actually cost a lot. My birthday when I was young, at seven years old, and everyone come to my home to have party, and someone say, "Oh, your fish is sleeping." I'm like, "Oh no, my <laughs> fish is dying actually." Oh no! They also sell insects here, and I'm talking about crickets, ants from the feed the fishes. Oh, he's trying to eat. <laughs> he's trying to bite the plastic bag. Kitty, do you like fish? 
<laughs> He's hungry. Wow, so beautiful. This, when I was a kid, is an absolute paradise. Everything looks so beautiful. And look at this. When I was young, I always like to choose very colorful fishes, especially this one. It's like an assorted pack where you can get like different colors. Wow, this is so beautiful. Yeah. So one pack of this is forty-eight Hong Kong dollars. Mini, mini, mini lobster. <laughs> wow, this is the extra pink fish that I saw in my life, and extra green. I don't know what they give them for. See, the, this is my favorite memory too. Like catching a good fish like this, and you just put it into the, the basket like this and then you just bring it to the cashier and pay. Oh wow. It was very interesting when I was young. So with these fishes, it's 100 Hong Kong dollars for three, 38 dollars for one. Imagine doing this, catching fishes like this when you're young, it's very exciting. Yeah. Wow, I miss doing this. I want a fish tank now. <laughs> So next up we're here at Flower Market Street. So this street is famous for selling different kinds of plants, pods, fertilizers, everything about plants you can find it here. But unfortunately we've come too late today so it looks like it's been closed already. So we'll come back another day. Let's come back after one second. We're back in a flower market in another day. So today is a Sunday so there are lots of people walking around us because this place in particular is famous for buying different kinds of plants. I remember when I was young, my mother actually tried to train me to take care of something, plants. And initially we got my first ever plant in this market. So basically many people come here specifically looking for decorations at home. We can decorate our home as much as we can. And the thing about this market I love is the unique type of pots that they have. What, what's your favorite plant? My favorite plant is a fake plant. <laughs> That's true, and this market has that too. Come, come, come. i show you something. Okay. Show you something. I found something that is really beautiful and I think it will look great indoors and in the office as well, looking for decorations. There is this pub in this store that sells these mini plants inside a glass container. It looks so beautiful, right? This is, looks like aquarium. This looks... I know this is plants. You can put inside some uh, fly and egg. You can put your finger inside so happens. It's a long stretching street, about maybe 20 minutes walk. This is flowers for give present to your girlfriend, mother, mother mother's day. grandmother. So each one of these costs up to 150 to 200 Hong Kong dollars, but it look really stunning. This is a really good price, even in Russia it's more expensive. And see, mm -hmm. they have mixed colorful. Now so beautiful pots for the plants. Yes. Like this. Amazing. Wow. This is priced 128 Hong Kong dollars. Oh, I cannot bring this to Russia. <laughs> yeah, we don't have allowance for luggages, unfortunately. Let me show you something very cute. So there's this section in this store that sells, that incorporates a Disney filmed <laughs> hook. Wow, I know this You plant. know, Monster Inc. This plankton from Monster? SpongeBob. Madagascar, Captain America. I know this has got Min Bao's Hyuyan. means like Brad Superman. 168 mm. Hong Kong dollars. Yep. This is shy grass. It's some. It's a type of rare plant that you can find it in Hong Kong. So basically, if you touch it, then it will retract. How do you know it's shine grass or not if you even cannot touch? I want to check. So another very interesting thing here in Hong Kong is that there are lots of domestic helpers in every household. That's because people in general in Hong Kong, they are super busy with their work. So it's very hard for them to babysit their children. That's why they hire all these foreign domestic workers to come to Hong Kong. So in terms of domestic workers, there are two majority groups. One is Filipino, another is Indonesian, and they each have their own territory in Hong Kong. Because it, previously, there are lots of fights in between Filipinos and Indonesians. That's why they usually separate into two different regions. For example, here on this bridge in Mongkok is full of Indonesians. So as you can see, they're having a good time with their friends, 
relaxing, sleeping, eating random with their family and friends, enjoying music. Some of them are even doing karaoke as well, so they're having a good time. But this is only Indonesians. But if you want to find Filipinos, they're usually in Causeway Bay and Central. That's because domestic helpers in general, they work six days a week. So the only day of holiday is Sunday. That's why they're all gathering out on the street, putting some plastic bags on the floor just to lie down. <laughs> and at the same time, they're also FaceTiming their families back home as well. Even for myself, in the past, in, in Hong Kong, I've had maybe 10 to 12, 12 domestic workers when I was young. So a lot of people took, took care of me. That's why even now, when we make uh, videos in the Philippines sometimes, my previous domestic worker would message me and say like, oh, you did this great because she's from Philippines. But you can see, as you can see, they're all laying down uh, on a plastic bag, just having a good time, I guess, with their friends and family eating because they don't get to do this during weekdays. For me, this is something new because in Russia, we don't have a lot of domestic workers. Everything do like our parents. And I think I understand why they are staying here in a holiday because usually when they do some work in a people house, they have so small room, whereas they have only bed. Spend your holiday there, it will be so lonely. Hello. Oh, this Indonesian food. Oh. <laughs> We know only nasi goreng. Nasi goreng. Nasi goreng. <laughs> no, no, no. How? Oh, me? I am from here. I'm, yeah. I'm from Russia, but before I lived in Bali many years. <laughs> Love Bali. Yeah. Wow, you're selling lots of food. You're selling the food here. Wow. How long have you been cooking this food? <laughs> huh? Don't know what? Oh, they speak Cantonese. Oh, wow. They speak Cantonese. Wow, they speak Cantonese. Wow, they speak Cantonese. Wow. Where do you speak Cantonese? No, I need to learn Cantonese. Wow, she worked here for nine years and he, she learned Cantonese already. They are so friendly. Yeah, Indonesians are so friendly, always. <laughs> so basically, what they're telling me is that they've been living here for nine years and Cantonese is a very essential language if you want to work in Hong Kong. So that's why many of the Indonesians here, after a while, they will start picking up Cantonese words and eventually learning Cantonese. I was very impressed because Cantonese is one of the hardest dialects when it, in Chinese to learn from. The police that you saw just then, they're not really police, they are just um, hygiene inspectors. Basically, they look at the hygiene environment around Hong Kong. They monitor lots of food stores, or in this case, they're looking at what people are selling to make sure the food is safe. So usually, you could get a fine if you start selling food on the street without a license. That's what they're doing now. They're trying to maintain the order, make sure the Indonesians here, they're selling safety food. That's why the Indonesians here, they immediately try to cover up what they're selling just now with a cover. Because you're not allowed to sell food unless you've got a license. So next stop we're here at Sino Center, Sun Wo Jung Sam. Basically, it's the hidden gem for many anime lovers. What it appears to be a old commercial building, inside you can find treasure. For example, you can find lots of K-pop star stickers, wallpapers, lots of toys, anime, phone cases everywhere. Usually in Hong Kong University graduation, people like to buy one of these dolls and just take photos with them in front of the university. It's like a tradition, I don't know why, but it's very popular in Hong Kong. I can't say I'm like one of those super fan of anime like Weeps, but I do know a few. For example, this is from the Spy Family, this girl, Anya. Many of these characters, for example, One Punch Man, Demon Slayer. So a lot of people in Hong Kong, they are toy collectors, so they like to come to these kind of shopping malls during weekends to buy special minifigures. For example, this massive Pikachu, Muscle Man. <laughs> <laughs> and some stores in this shopping mall, they actually sell video games as well. So Nintendo Switch, uh, PSP. So I remember when I was young, we have a small PSP device and I would buy one of those discs uh, from one of these stores here. A family activity of me is building Gundams with my family. But it's actually a small minifigure. It's not the real one. The big one, it's like, come, I'll show you. The real ones are over there. Big box. Wow, these are actually lamps. 
Pokemon style lamp. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and help you guys plan your next shopping spree here in Mongkok. And to be honest, my impression of the streets are exactly the same from five years ago where it's so vibrant, lots of people, and you can buy so many products on these streets. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>